Hey, it's Tech. Welcome to Off The Cuff. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite weirdest phenomenon. Okay, let me paint you a picture. You're sitting at your computer, you're just working along, you're working along, and maybe you're watching a YouTube video or writing a document, and all of a sudden your computer crashes. Maybe it's a really big crash. It's like not just a program locking up, but you get a blue screen on Windows or a gray screen on a Mac, and everything's gone and it just has to reboot. Now, most of the time, that's just a software or programming error. Or maybe you're, if it's an older computer, you have some, some bad hardware that's causing a crash. But on occasion, your computer crash is going to be caused by random particles from outer space. Okay, now that sounds like a joke, but it's actually true. Now, I call them random particles from outer space because I love how it sounds. They're actually cosmic rays. And now, cosmic rays are high energy particles, either photons or free nuclei or uh, free particles like electrons that are whizzing around in space. They're produced by stars, by supernova, by the interaction of black holes with their surrounding environment. And they are everywhere in space. We're lucky here on Earth because we're largely protected from them by our atmosphere and our magnetosphere. So the particles are more likely to interact with the air before they get to you, and they're more likely to be deflected by the magnetosphere than, than they are to actually get to you. But other planets, like this, this is when they talk about, when NASA talks about um, planets' atmospheres being stripped away. It's from these cosmic rays. Our sun produces them just as a normal part of its own processes, our um, so they're, they're in the solar wind, uh, everything, they're, they're just everywhere in the galaxy. Um, when you turn on an analog TV and you're not tuned to a channel, there's nothing being broadcast, you get that really classic random white noise pattern and snow as a lot of people called it. Part of that is energy from cosmic rays that you're seeing. Part of it is also energy from the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is lower energy than standard cosmic rays. Usually cosmic rays are considered X-rays and above for photons or free nuclei or free other uh, particles with mass. Um, so that you have a little bit of that in analog snow. And for a long time, we really didn't know or care too much about them here on Earth because they didn't really affect very much until our computer chips started getting smaller. My uh, current computer that I just built, if you've been watching my stuff, you know it. The CPU is built using a 14 nanometer process. That's really, really, really small. And at that scale, you're starting to get um, the right size that the energy from a single cosmic ray can actually change how the computer performs. In fact, your memory, the memory uh, in your computer has been the most affected thing by it. Every, uh, about two to three times a day, if you're using a computer all day long, one cosmic ray will change uh, the value of something stored in your memory. That's how frequently it happens. It's happening all the time, right? So a couple times a day, it's actually gonna do something. And on a rare occasion, it can actually, if it hits the wrong part of memory, can crash your computer. This is a known fact. In uh, servers and in high-end computers, this is one of the main reasons that they use error-corrected memory, uh, ECC, if you look up part numbers and stuff like that. It's because they get these errors just by being on and having particles hit them from outer space. That's insane. Um, it's also a big problem for humans as we consider going places like Mars or the Mars rovers or anything like that, anything that's outside of the protection of the Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere. Normally, those particles are guided to the poles where they become the aurora borealis, the aurora australis. Um, the, they come in, they get concentrated, they cause the luminescence of the atmosphere as they interact, and they look really pretty. They're really cool. If you've never seen the Northern Lights, go watch them. They're, find time in your life, put it on your bucket list. They're really, really cool. But um, that is actually a visible indication of what's going on in outer space. In my video on the frame rate of the human eye, I mentioned 
that the astronauts going to the moon, their eyes, they were actually able to see these cosmic rays as it interacted with their retinas, which is really crazy to me. Um, but on the inter a little bit closer to home on the International Space Station, it actually creates a problem, something you've probably not thought about. Um, current camera sensors, the pixels are really small. We're dealing in the order of micrometers here. And um, these micron scale photosites can get damaged pretty easily by high energy particles striking the silicon. Um, in fact, I've looked at some of the raw video that has come from the International Space Station with their uh, ultra high definition cameras that have come up there because of my job. Long story, don't ask me about it. But I've seen it and I've seen the fixed noise patterns that have come from damaging the sensors. If they want to protect their camera equipment, they either have to have it on all the time where the charges and circuitry will be, the sensor is constantly changing and, and absorbing the energy so that it doesn't damage anything, or they have to have it submerged in a bag in, surrounded by 10 inches of water that's around, ooh, what, 25, 24 centimeters. Uh, well, 24.5, um, so 25.4, 2.54, yeah, 25.4 centimeters. Like, it's, it's a big enough deal that NASA has to be continually sending up brand new cameras, and the old ones are just sent and burnt up in the atmosphere on the way home. There's literally millions of dollars of camera equipment that has burned up over the ocean just because the sensors are destroyed. NASA has to plan on this when they're dealing with their telescopes. If the sensors are turned off, they have to be protected in a way that the cosmic rays aren't gonna damage them because there's no way of getting up there and fixing them. Um, it's, it's a big problem. It wasn't a problem back when our chips were a lot bigger and the photosites were a lot bigger, so a small amount of damage to one area didn't make much of a difference, but now they do. Another thing that it affects is the computers that we actually send up to the International Space Station. They aren't protected by the atmosphere and they're less protected by the magnetosphere. In those cases, those computers interact a lot more with cosmic rays than the ones at here on home. And you can imagine a computer crash here on Earth as a problem. On the International Space Station, it's even worse. So they have um, very few few computers that are actually qualified. If you've ever seen video from the International Space Station or photos, you're gonna notice that all of the computers, all of them are Lenovo ThinkPads. They're the only systems that are actually qualified for the International Space Station. They, re they use laptops to control all of the space station systems because they wear out over time through interaction with cosmic rays and just wear out in general. And if the computers were actually built into the space station, they'd never be able to be upgraded or it would be a lot more expensive to be upgraded. You have to have all this custom hardware and new supplies and all the testing for every new round of chips. So instead they rely on third party manufacturer, IBM ThinkPads, formerly uh, sorry, Lenovo ThinkPads, formerly IBM ThinkPads, uh, Lenovo, I can't remember if it spun off or it was bought, the ThinkPad brand from IBM, but IBM moved out of the personal laptop business and ThinkPads went away. So um, you have these weird interactions that are going on on the space station and that went on on the Apollo missions when we really went far. When we start going to Mars, cosmic rays become that much more of a problem and not just to the computer equipment. So the computer equipment is problematic because it can damage it through the long-term exposure. So, so there's literally a, sh a shelf life for the rockets and equipment that are on their way there. But they also damage humans. There's a weird fact that astronauts who have been on the International Space Station get cataracts. Not they might get cataracts, they get cataracts. And faster, more sooner than either medical history or anything else would dictate. And a lot of that's because of the interaction with cosmic rays with the eyes. Right now, up in the International Space Station, we have astronaut, I wanna say it's Scott Kelly, who's doing a year long, who has a twin 
One of them has a twin right now. And they're doing essentially a case controlled study as best as they can with astronauts, putting one in space and having the twin uh, checked here, identical twin that is, checked here on Earth. So any genetic predispositions can be ruled out. Um, and they want to see essentially biologically what, what the interaction with these cosmic rays have on astronauts. It's weird. It's a weird phenomenon and something that we have to plan for as we move further and further out of our galaxy. So next time you are taking video and you noticed a little bit of noise in the background, or next time your computer crashes, blame it on cosmic rays because those random particles from outer space are just bombarding us from everywhere. And if you want to make your friends, freak out your friends, share this video with them. Tell them uh, they, they, they literally won't believe that what can crash your computer. That was a terrible, terrible ending. Maybe you shouldn't share it because I just embarrassed myself, but I'm not gonna cut it because that's what off the cuff is. So until next time, I'm Tech Adams saying keep thinking and thanks for watching.